Forces Day at Selfridge Air Force Base, Michigan, draws a large crowd of visitors who find an Army Globemaster a point of attraction. But the real guest of honor is the Chrysler-built Redstone guided missile, one of the newest in the arsenal of the atomic age. In honor of the day, some of the newest jets put on a show. At Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, the dramatic destruction of a B-17 bomber, a Scorpion attack plane launches its rockets. Unscheduled, however, is this crash landing of a Cougar jet aboard the carrier Essex. Defense Department pictures show its mad skid across the flight deck and plunge into the sea. Alert sea rescue operations are instantly mobilized, and the pilot, barely missed by the carrier, is hauled from the water by a helicopter after nothing more serious than a shake-up and a ducking. Slightly complicated, but a happy landing for Lieutenant Herbert Camp, United States Navy. France throws the bulk of its military manpower into the Algerian rebellion, which daily assumes the proportions of total war. Flying columns fan out through the country, which on all sides has become a target for hit and run attacks by native guerrillas. And rounding up guerrillas has kept almost 400,000 of France's best troops pinned down. Chief sufferers in the raids have been the outlying farm communities, many of which have been raised by fire and their operators slaughtered. Whole factories have been put to the torch, even as France builds up its military establishment to peak strength. Armed depots now dot the whole Algerian landscape, as French forces are deployed to provide swift striking power in a war of attrition whose end is not in sight. A flower shop named in honor of their sister Emily is formally opened by the four surviving Dion quintuplets. The shop is the first business venture the quints have undertaken since receiving their inheritance on their 21st birthday. Marie will run it. Father Gaston Sauve of Ottawa University gives spiritual blessing to the little store that keeps alive the name of one of the most famous babies of the century. Annette, Cecile and Yvonne say good luck to Sister Marie at Salon Emily. The walkie-talkie makes its debut at a hospital. These dollar-sized two-way radios will keep doctors and nurses in constant touch with their patients. Each staff member has a wavelength assigned to him, which is signaled by a beep on the receiver, called by an operator at the central switchboard. Paging Dr. X, he listens to the message and, if necessary, can answer the board. In the old days, it used to be done by loudspeaker to the monotonous discomfort of patients. And nurse gets her signal. And to a brand new mother, it can bring the gladdest of all sounds. From a distant nursery, the cry of her brand new baby. Race number two in Turfdom's trilogy that starts in Louisville. The Preakness at Old Pimlico. 30,000 are out to see if Needles can do it again. Needles, number six, is the favorite. He won the Derby. Now he has to win number two. Time will tell. And here they go. Nine three-year-olds off and running in the mile and three-sixteenths race. Shorter than the Derby, and therein perhaps lies the story. As was the case at Louisville, Needles was favored and Fabius was second choice. As was the case at Louisville where Fabius came in second, the Calumet Farms entry made his move in the back stretch like he is now, while Needles was back with the tail enders just the way he is right now. Does history repeat itself so soon? Does lightning ever strike twice? With Willie Hartack in the irons, Fabius rounds the bend and heads into the payoff stretch. Needles has made his move. As Fabius backers recall he did at Churchill Downs, and pulses begin to tingle now as it begins to look like a derby repeat. Here comes Needles on the outside, gaining with every yard. But this is the Preakness, a shorter race, remember, and the yards run out. History does not repeat itself. Fabius is the winner. 
in the best performance of his career. $84,000 richer, while Needle settles for second and $25,000. So Fabius brings joy to his rooters, come to mama, but spoils Needle's bid for racing's big three. Depends on how you look at it, whom you picked. Right now, they're tossing kisses to Fabius, the pride of the Preakness. Love that Fabius. Fabulous. At Garden State Park, a millionaire has his picture taken before going on a romp. Nashua, the big bay colt whose purchase price topped a million dollars, is out to set another money mark. With his favorite jockey, Eddie Arcaro, in the saddle, Nashua hopes to win the Camden handicap and boost his earnings above the old million-plus figure set by the great citation. The race is on, and as expected by 38,000 onlookers, it's Nashua showing his heels to the field. It's Nashua by two lengths, a victory that earns him $22,000, boosting the four-year-old thoroughbred's total money winnings to 1,100,000. That is 14,000 more than Citation's old mark, making Nashua the greatest money winner in turf history. Will a millionaire rest on his laurels? Nay.